Hi, welcome to the Happiness Hive podcast. I'm Catherine Bowyer and I am completely fascinated by people and what motivates them. I've spent the past three and a half decades specialising in mindset and human behaviour. And I've helped thousands of people to create happy and amazing lives. And now I am super excited to be chatting with women from around the world who I have secret, and to be honest, not so secret crushes on. They're women who inspire me. I'm intrigued as to how they do life and what makes them tick. I want to find out their magic formula that makes them who they are. And at the end of the episode, I'd love for you to say, I'd like a little bit of what she's having. The conversations are real and raw. They're full of passion, inspiration and lots of fun. And nothing is off limits. So grab yourself a cuppa or pop on your trackie and go for a walk. And join us for today's chat. It may just be that pearl of wisdom you need to hear. So let's shimmy on over and get started. Welcome to this week's episode of the Happiness Hive podcast and with our very special guest, Janine Botha. And I'm really looking forward to this chat because Janine and I have very similar career backgrounds and ethos on life. We both worked in large corporations. We've both left those large corporations and have started our own businesses. And we both have a passion for working with women. So I'm really keen to talk with Janine about that, but I'm also really keen to talk with her about, she's a big believer in taking the leap and seeing what happens. And she left her corporate role, traveled around Australia for 12 months and big changes happened there. So I just want to find out, Janine, all about that. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So tell me, where are you coming to from today? Where do you live? I'm now based on the central coast in New South Wales, but I was originally a Sydney girl. So most of my network and for my business and corporate and everything is all down in Sydney. But that's part of the story of the travel around Australia. Awesome. Did you grow up in Sydney? So you, when you say Sydney girl? Uh, originally, I actually, I was born in South Africa. My dad's a South African and my mum's an Aussie. And they met overseas, got married, and then went back to South Africa for many years. And then my dad got a, a job offer that was just too good to refuse. So we didn't actually move or leave there for any political reasons. But I've been here most of my life, hence why I do not have the accent, because <laughs> I was 11 when we landed here. So, yeah. Yeah. And then moved to Sydney. And yeah. Then... So my, that's where my nana was based. So my mum wanted to come back to her mum. And then, yeah, we settled in Sydney and I grew up there, went to primary, high school, university, all in Sydney. And it wasn't really until this big change happened that I kind of ventured outside of Sydney and went to, you know, go and explore the the world as such around Australia. And then when I came back, the girl who said she'd never leave Sydney left Sydney and relocated first in Newcastle. And then a couple of years later, we moved down to the coast. Oh, wow. So what was, what, because I know that that's a big change for you. That was kind of the catalyst for changes. Yes. Tell What was leading yeah. up to that and, and what was it and then what's happened since? Yeah, that's a good, good question. So I've always been very ambitious and I guess probably because of my parents' background, not, it, neither of them had been to university. So it was a very big thing to go to university. And now I look back on it and I'm like, I don't know why I went to university because really, <laughs> what has that got to do with anything that I'm doing today, right? So I guess I will change that mentality in my own head for my boys. But it was, it was so I was always very achievement orientated. So when I, st- I started in this corporate, big corporate role, I, you know, very quickly was like determined to work myself up every year to a different position. And then, you know, 10 years later, even though it had been in the same corporation, we'd been taken over three or four times in that time. And you know what that means? It's yeah. all new stuff, all changes. So with the, the job never really got dull is the best way of describing it. And then the, I had an amazing leader for those 10 years who was a very good mentor, like a second dad in a way. And I just learned so much. He was just amazing. And he decided to leave. And that was kind of when the opportunity to take on the HR director role came. And I, at first I was a bit, 
I don't know if I want to be a director. And I remember Ian saying to me, well, how would you know when you've never done it? And I was like, oh, that's a good point. Okay, I'll throw my hat in the ring. And I got the, the role and, and I did love it. I, I enjoyed kind of taking that next step up and being more strategic around the HR function and, you know, continuing all the beautiful work we'd been doing for so long. But what I was tired of was the consistent change with buying out new organizations and, you know, everyone amalgamating into one and then all the stuff that comes with that. And I think it wasn't only me. I think the organization as a whole was tired of that. Um, like that change for team. That change. I exactly. find that a lot, Janine. I work a lot in corporate and it's just that fatigue. Like the, a lot right. of people say the only constant thing is change. And it's true, but it's yes. tiring. It's tiring. Yeah. And especially when it's frequent, you yes. know, yeah. like I, I think most people can cope with change and, you know, are willing to go there now because they don't, they, you know, won't be successful. But I think when it's so frequent and it takes so much out of you and that's kind of what happened. So about two and a bit years into the role as the HR director, I remember it very clearly. We were in a, a, a executive leadership team meeting and I was sitting next to the CEO who I had a wonderful relationship with and he said, we're going again. Mm. And I knew exactly what that meant. And I literally, so give you a little bit of background. So in the background, I had met my partner, Shane, who I'm still with. We've now been together for 14 years. I'd only just met him and we had only just sort of started our relationship. And he, over that Christmas period, had said, I really want to go traveling around Australia. And I looked at him going, well, this is going to be a short-lived little relationship because I've just worked my booty off to get to, you know, the HR director role. It's taken me 12 years to get up here. And I'm not going to throw that away for nothing. Anyway, forward a few months later, sitting in this meeting, the announcement goes out that we're doing it again. And it was literally a, a split second decision where I just went, well, you won't be doing it with me. Wow. And I literally followed him out of the office and he is this like tall, nearly seven foot man, you know, and he kind of turned around and there was this little person just sitting behind him. He was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I said, I can't do this. Yeah. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, I can't do another change. I can't stand up in front of 600 people, 800 people and say, yeah, yeah. let's do this again. When I really felt like I was depleted. Mm. And that was the moment. So I kind of from there went back to Shane and said, hey, if you really want to do this, then let's plan. And I've got three months notice I have to work out. Let's get organized and let's go. So yeah. that's what we did. So did you resign at that point or did you take, you resigned yet? Yeah, I, 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 he said to me, go think about it, which I did. You know, the, the interesting thing was that the people I did not go and talk about this with was my parents. Because, you know, they're from a different generation and it was like, you know, what do you do? You mean you've worked all your life to get up here? Work was very important to my dad. So I knew there was going to be no support on that side of this crazy decision. Um, but what I did trust was my gut. Yeah. And my gut was saying, this is right. Go for it. You've never done anything like this. I'd had a few trips overseas, you know, that I'd saved up, but not a big thing like this. Yeah, so when I left uh, the, the company, I was 36. Yeah, I, was, so, you know, I was just yeah. going to ask you how old yeah. you were. And it, it's interesting, I'm reflecting as I hear what you, you're talking about, that there was this feeling inside you, trusting your gut, but you were tired and you were kind of the, one of the front people about the change. Yeah. Yeah, and it's hard to to get up when you're not believing or you're worn out. My change from I worked in a got large government organization, and I'd also had progressed the ladder, but I was never achievement oriented. It kind of just fell yep. into my you know it just yep. happened. yeah happened happened. Yep. Um, but I got a sense that. It was starting, the organization I worked for, they, there was a lot of change. There was a lot of change and it was exciting. But I got to a point in my career and my life, I had just met my husband 
it was much more exciting to hang out with and yep. like yep. study yeah. and work and all that sort of stuff. But I got a sense that there was something more and I had outgrown where I was, but I still had that sense that I didn't want more of what I had. So it was also yeah. that trusting my gut. And I also resigned thinking I was never going to work again <laughs> I was yeah, at that's the age of 32. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Now we look back and we just laugh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I think there's an innate bit that kind of feels yeah. right in when yes. you've made that decision. And I think also was ethically, I felt like I couldn't stand up as the H or the yeah. like our title back then was my Keith on Culture Director yeah. and go, I'm on board when I knew I wasn't. And then to say to everyone else, I know you're tired, but hey, this is going to be great. And I, you know, so that misalignment, isn't it? In misalignment. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. know, that's interesting too, as you were, because I'm reflecting now, I was working on a really big leadership program when I decided to leave. Oh, no, it wasn't. That was a step before, but there was that misalignment. I was working yeah. with a guy who, here we are teaching people to be great leaders. And he was a, yep. excuse my language, he was a fucking, such a dick. Yeah. Um, and it was just this incongruency. It was just like, I can't, yeah. um, I can't stay in this space. Yeah. So I did actually end up changing roles, but that was a stepping stone to me leaving. So it's that yeah. misalignment too, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and I had wonderful people that I worked with. I, the CEO was a great guy, you know, all that kind of stuff was great. It was literally... What I realized later was I was burnt out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I didn't know that at the time. I just felt like I just don't have the energy for this. But now I look back and I go, yeah, you completely burnt out. How long ago? That was 12 years ago. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. So we traveled around Australia from August 2010 to about September 2011. And so thinking back that many years ago, because burnout is quite... We, we talk about it more now. We recognise it more. I, I can yeah. recognise back then too that yeah. well, we didn't recognise what it was or even how to have the conversations around it and how to even manage that. Yeah, but and, you know, back then you, you'd, not, you'd feel the same way. You know, if you spoke about things like culture or EAPs or yeah. mental health or well-being in general or menopause at quick. Yeah. And this was stuff that you just never, ever raised. It was all done behind the closed door and, you know, and nowadays, you know, it's, I think it's one of the great things that's happened over the last 10 years is all of this stuff is now just part of an, every normal conversation because it's, because that's a bit, we're talking about humans here, right? You yeah. know what, a lot of the work organizations I work in, I, I don't know if it's part of everyday conversation. I think it's there's still some people there. Even the other I day, agree. so the EAP, the Employee Assistance Program, I was even talking with somebody the other day and they just said, oh, no, no, couldn't do that. I don't want people to find out. And it's just like, oh, my goodness, you have this resource of amazing people yeah. who can help you. But anyway, yeah. So yeah. what happened? You went on this this big adventure. Yeah, so we did what this big it? adventure around Australia. I thought I was going to be bored, but happily found myself not bored and took on the role of sort of photographing and journaling all about our amazing trip. So I was very lucky though. I did all the way back then, you know, where people still called working from home or doing work around as teleworking. I mean, you know, I was offered uh, through this same CEO, even though I'd resigned, I did a, a company-wide culture survey and s engagement survey and then could do all of that while I was traveling around, which, you know, I look back now and I go, well, that was quite interesting that it, all the way back then, you know, know, I was I, happy to do it, right? Gosh, we've got so many parallels because when I was working for, I talked about that shitty boss I had, yeah. but the last boss I had was awesome. Yeah. And my kids, so my daughter's 28, my son's 26, and he said, Catherine, I don't mind where you get the work done as long as you get whatever done by whatever time. So I was working from home back then, 30 years ago. Isn't that um, amazing, right? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. yeah. Like didn't have quite the technology, but I must have had some 
stuff well, that that's I could do. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. That's exactly. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they had this wonderful, amazing 12 months. You know, I still claim it as one of the best years of my life it, because it was a year of no responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Our biggest choice was where are we going today? What are we eating? Do I have to fill up gas? Do I need to do a what load of washing? You know, we had no kids. We didn't have to worry about Christmas presents or birthday presents for everyone. You know, it was just this year of complete and utter freedom, which we've never experienced since. So, you know. And then we, when we came home, we initially moved to Newcastle. Um, and I, 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 I was quite happy not going back into Sydney. I think the year around it kind of given me that space and recognition. And in Newcastle, we ended up having our two boys. And then we moved from there back down to the Central Coast because by then I'd started my own business. And I'll talk about that in a second, how that came about. And the commute from Newcastle to Sydney was just too big. Especially when I had two babies. My boys are 13 months apart. Cool. So You're I had busy. Little... Mine are 20. Mine are yeah. 20. Yeah. That's busy, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's busy, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, so that just made sense. And I think for the for, for myself and for the family. And Shane had grown up here on the Central Coast. Yeah. So there was, you know, awareness and, and friends that lived here and all the rest of it. So it just made sense. Yeah. yeah. So what business, What did, what was the... So you started your business. What do you do? Yes. So I run, well, I have two businesses. So I started back then a service-based business, which is still running, which is called BU Consulting. And that business is all about leadership development, strategy work, facilitation of, you know, kickoffs, et cetera. So I started that but by accident. So I started looking around for roles in Newcastle for HR directors or HR managers, senior leaders in people and culture. And at the time in Newcastle, very industrial relations focused because of all the coal yeah. mining, et cetera. Yeah. And yes, I can do it, but I don't like it at all. It's not, it's yeah. not me. And I, I just had this thing in my head. If you go and do that, you're going to hate it. And then that's just exactly what you walked away from. So why would you put yourself in that situation? And so then it was a case of, do I start looking in Sydney or what do you know? What's the options? And really a bit like what you were talking about before, sometimes you get handed things. One of the other directors when I was in HR rang me and he, out of the blue and said, heard you back, I need you to come and do some work with me. And I was very cautious because by then there was a new HR director in place. But the good thing was his work, he was the director for outsourcing. It was an IT services organization. And he said, come and work with the clients. So you're not going to be internal. I want you to help me get people to understand that when we do outsourcing, it's really about the relationships, not the technical stuff. And so that's kind of how I got my first gig and 12 years, 14 years later, here we are, right? So. Yes. So that was, so that's how that all kicked off. Yeah. What's the other name of the business then? So in last year, I, well, this had been percolating in the back of my mind as a result of COVID. Mm-hmm. I was very, very fortunate and don't take that for granted that during COVID, it was a very easy switch for me. I had a lot of uh, beautiful clients in corporate organizations that I was doing leadership work mm-hmm. with one-on-one coaching, it all just lovely flipped into Zoom and, yeah. you know, Teams. And I, in the back of my head, I was like, this is crazy. I can't believe that I've been driving down to Sydney to have a one-on-one meeting with a brand new client and then driving all the way back for that one hour, like when we could have just done it yeah. this way. And of course, the world is now much more accepting of it yeah. and all the changes. So in the back of my head, What I saw during COVID was, as we all did, the conversations were not so much about work. It became more about life. Mm. And what I found when I was talking to the females I was coaching in particular was that burden that was already big prior to it became even bigger. And lots of people were making big life choices, you know, leaving their marriages and, you know, like just huge things that came out of some of the conversations. 
there was the theme that was there was two. One was how many women allowed a lack of confidence to be a blocker to their full potential? Mm. And number two was how many women had actually lost the connection with themselves? Mm. Yeah. And so I thought as a result, I wanted to go in and explore this online world mm. and how do I create a program for women in corporate that is not just purely about their career and goals and stuff professionally, but actually is a lot more holistic and can get them to kind of figure out what is it they want and need and how do we put goals in around that in alignment with, if I do that stuff, I know that's going to allow me to be more confident and more fulfilled. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many parallels there. I'm sort of thinking that we, I almost sound, yeah, the experiences yeah. and it's um, interesting. Like I've been Still, my business, I have two arms to my business. Yes. One of them still yep. in the corporate space and working. I work with men yes. and women in the corporate space. But yes, same. Same, same. yeah. Yes. And then Happiness Hive is predominantly working with women. And I was clearing up, like I'm in the process of getting ready for a big sea change. Like we're up and moving from Canberra to the South Coast later this year. And so doing a huge clear out and it was kind of, so many resources that I got and I've kept just in case, and they're really valuable resources. But one of yeah. them I found is this called Springboard. It's called Women's Development Workbook. And this is from the early 90s, like right. early 90s, like huge resource. But what's what I find interesting, Janine, it's about you know, the world about you knowing yourself. So you talked about losing connection with yourself. But well, one of the things I really find is that when we have that deeper connection and understanding, then that kind of forms a foundation for being able to be who we really want to be. Exactly. Um, you know, what you've, what you've got going for you, finding support, setting goals and being confident and being assertive. There's stuff about more energy, less anxiety, managing, managing yourself and blowing your own trumpet and why women find that challenging. So this is 30 years ago. Wow, that's amazing, really. But we're still, why are we still, why are we yeah. still struggling with that? What's your yeah. take on that? Like what's the, what's our magic? I think Let's, because by nature, uh, we as females are about the nurture. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it, it, it's, it's within us to automatically put other people first. Yeah. Um, you know, we care for our kids. We care for our elderly parents. We care for our, you know, spouse or our husband. We look after our friends. We, it, even in the workplace, right? We, we see this happen all the time. Yeah. That's why we struggle to say no. It's why we, you know, we don't want to let anyone down because that, that's innately in us. I think what we have to figure out now is, you know, we, we want all the things and I'm not a big believer in the whole concept of work-life balance. I think it's more around figuring out what things need to be in place personally and professionally that allow me to have well-being. Yeah. And for me, right? it's around harmony and it's True. about, I, I you know, when we talk That's about good. balance, it's not about having everything all at once. No. It's about, and I, I see it too, that we go through chapters in life. Yes. And then, you know, a lot of women say, you know, my husband's, you know, pursuing his goals at the moment and I really want to pursue mine. And it's like, well, when we're in relationships, and I know a lot of women listening are not, but it's about give and take and Correct. where are we at when kids yeah. are little. And I know a lot of women yeah. listening don't have kids either. Yeah. But what's happening in our lives and how do we adjust all of our lives to accommodate that? Yeah. So we can also pursue our goals professionally. Yeah, I agree. And I think, look, I didn't meet Shane until I was 36. So, yeah. And I was single for quite a, a yeah. long time. Which I think even for those who are, you know, single or choose not yeah. to have a partner, yeah, yeah. etc. You, you know, I think what happens is we still lose ourselves because yeah. then we make it all about our career. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know, and, and I yeah. think that's what burnt me out was I was like, okay, well, I don't have this, this and this, so I'm going to throw myself 120% into work and then I've still lost the connection with myself, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. 
And I, because I, when you don't have work, what else do you have? And who correct, are you? Correct. And one of, one of the yeah. things I really love exploring with my clients is like, who are they? And how do they want to show up? How do they want to show up in life? How do they want to show up in their relationships? How do they want to show up with family and friends? How do yes. they want to show up in work? And how do they want to show up for themselves? Right. And it's when they can be confident in themselves then that confidence in the workplace, that's where I find that the tricky that's bit is. And it's a trick yeah. effect. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How can I, when I'm confident in who I am, then I'm really not going to listen to those niggly voices. But, I mean, that all sounds very easy and wonderful. Yeah. But it's a but process. Think, to me, it's an evolution. It's absolutely. A I think evolution. it's an evolution and I definitely think it's a process. And I think the other thing that's tied in with the confidence is when I am authentically myself. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because you know yourself, when we speak to so many women, it's all about comparison. Yeah, yeah. And I know there's a statement, you know, a saying that says comparison is the thief of joy, but I actually flipped it and said yeah. comparison is actually the thief of confidence. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I told somebody the other day, flip that comparison stuff even a different way. They flipped it and said, you know how we, we often hear, you know, don't compare yourself to others. I, I agree with that. I agree with that because we often think, oh, look what Janine's doing. I wish I could be doing that. She's so great. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to do it because I wouldn't do it as good as Janine. Exactly. Or she's, she's really confident in meetings and I'm, yeah. I've got English as a second language yeah. and I don't want to speak, you know, yeah. all that stuff that plays out, right? Yeah. And I heard yeah. somebody the other day saying, um, Flip the script and compare yourself to other people. But don't, it's about what meaning you put on it because there are people out there, it's, it's about inspiring, being inspired by others, but not trying to copy others, not trying to be them. Sure, yes. be inspired by them, but how can you do it your way? And yeah, how can you that's... develop and grow? I like that kind of spin on yeah. Exactly. I don't know if it was comparison, but it was more about the inspiration. Yeah, I love that, yeah. right? Because yeah. you track stuff around how can I do it authentically in my but way, me. but be, still be inspired or, yeah. you know, get a learning from it or a takeaway. Sure, yeah. of course, but yeah. not copying it. Yeah, that's what, yeah, gosh, because you give your power away. I think you just so give your power away when you're copying and it doesn't yes. feel right. It just doesn't. I've done that before tried to Damn. somebody's done something going oh yeah I'm going to do that and then it's just like no, that shoe doesn't yeah. fit on my foot yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly right. yeah and I, I that beautiful boss that I was talking about before Ian who's still in my life I remember this moment very clearly we were doing a, a sort of a round table feedback session for the HR yeah. team at the time and it was a really interesting exercise. It was called a fishbowl exercise. Yeah, yeah. And you literally just stand and write down everything everyone's saying about you. And you can't talk back yeah. until the very end. And then you can only ask clarifying questions. And, uh, you know, Ian, everyone loved him because he was such a wonderful coach. And so I had literally just got, I'm going to be a coach like Ian. Yeah, yeah. And in this session, he said, I want Janine to realize that she's probably a better coach than I am. And I just, well, I was like putting the pen under my arm, guard, writing that down. That's crazy. Like, you know, and everyone was giggling because they knew I couldn't say anything, but I was giving him death stares, you know. And, and at the end he said, I just want you to realize you don't need to do it the same way as I do it because you pull things out of people that I could never get out of them. Because you connect with people on a different level, whereas I am all business and strategy and stuff, whereas you get to the heart of what's making them tick. And in that moment, I was like, oh, okay, now I've got to go away and figure out how do I lean into and make this stuff even better because it is my differentiator and it will help me. I love that. I love that. And maybe for those listening, thinking about as a obvious takeaway, but there's probably a whole lot of others, is to really tune into the magic of who you are and how can you really embody the magic of who you are? Because your magic is different to my magic, but we all have magic within us. Absolutely. I was with a new client the other day and she asked me if I wanted a coffee and I said, no, I don't drink coffee. And she went, oh, 
that surprises me because I profiled you as a coach would be drinking coffee. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting that you've profiled me. <laughs> but, but what she was saying is that I have certain expectations about you. Yeah. And I said, gorgeous, a lot of those things that you think about me are probably not going to be in a yes. lot of what you think because yes. I bring a very different energy to other. I mean, and she hadn't had coaches before, so she was kind of going from this, I don't know what she was going Stereotype. Yeah. Stereotype. But we all bring, we all bring. So I guess it's about recognising that that magic of who we are. And that's, I yes. find, one of the challenges that a lot of women have, that they don't get to that stage of even recognising. So you and I and other beautiful coaches out there can help people to yeah. kind of tap into their, their magic. Yeah. yeah. As you and I, and, you know, you and I are the same way. As a coach, we are already working with them at their highest potential. So we can already see that, you yes. know, yeah. and then for them to go, you know, they're here thinking yeah. of themselves here and we're like, no, they're climbing the ladder. Yeah, yeah. So you can see this great view I've yeah. got of you. Yeah. I'm always saying to my friends, if only you could see yourself the way others do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we all suffer from it. Right? I we all I, my, my thinking is that whoever our creator is, has probably put that mask on us, probably just to keep the ego in check a little bit because, yeah. you know, I think it is, I, I think we do need to see that that beauty within us. But I think if we saw it all, all at once, we yes. need to manage our ego. Oh, yeah, it yeah. allows us to be humble. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. What, what, what fills your cup? What makes you happy? Oh, he's about. I do this great exercise with my coaching students and, and we talk about it in the Be Bold, Be Brave program. And I say to them, right, filling your cup, I call it me time. Yeah. And as, again, females, we really struggle with carving out just me time. Like so, so many people go, oh, you know, coffee while I wait for the kids to do their swimming lessons. I'm like, that's not me. No. Right. So, you know, so, so me, so I get them to think about it from a daily basis, weekly, monthly quarterly so they build up right so for me daily can be something as simple as just sitting outside for 10 minutes with a cup of tea and patting the dogs yeah simple weekly I love things that fill me up is of course daily cuddles with my kids Mm -hmm. definitely I love going to the beach and walking on the beach or going to the beach and breathing the air I'm I'm not good at doing that though. So I have to have Shane kind of reminding me to go, we're going to the beach. Oh, and then goodness. once I'm there, I'm like, do I not do this? You know, um, reading books. I love, I'm just really trying this year. That's one of my big goals is to just read for fun again. I think yeah. I've read so many business and self development books over the last couple of years. I just want to enjoy reading again. Family lunches and dinners, barbecues with friends. I uh, love traveling. I do love traveling and family holidays and all the rest of it. And I love carving out time for me to go on a retreat or a business conference where it's just me time and I can just have space and calm and not have to react to mum or think about food or, you know, what time I've got to pick someone up. So, yeah, they're all the things that kind of fuel me and fill me up. Oh, I love it. Do you know what, when you're talking about that me time for when you go away for business and personal retreats, I, I did a lot of travel when I was working for corporate yes. and less so, but a little bit now. Um, my real joy is staying in my accommodation and getting room service and having dinner on the bed. Like I know. I know. The simple know. joys of life so is simple. just yeah. yeah. what that represents is I don't have to worry about going out anywhere. I don't have to worry about anybody else but myself. And it's yes. about, to me, that's pure, hugely indulgent. Absolutely. Well, one of the things, I've just got back from Bali. I had this beautiful time wow. in Bali. and Amazing. It was so amazing. <laughs> And one of the things when I was talking, we did a, a, my son and I did our own personal little retreat. And one of the messages that came very clearly about filling your cup, and I've always used that term, and I even asked you the question about filling your cup. We can't always have a full cup because if it's always full 
and there's no room for anything new. It gets stinky and stagnant and we need that. Love that. Back. So we need to be able to have our um, cups to be able to fill them, but also not to have them so full that we can't put anything new yeah, and fresh love that. in them. So I really love that. resonated with me that just gave me a different energy that, sure, do things to fill it, but also empty it and how do we pour out from our cup? Yeah, I love that. And then refill it. So that was very cool. Yeah, I um, love that. Oh my gosh, time goes so quickly. Where can our listeners find you, Janine? On my website is uh, beconsulting.com.au. Yeah. I'm um, also on Instagram under Janine underscore both that. And then yep. I've also got Facebook and so on. And I will send you a link that you can put in the show notes to that me time checklist. Perfect. Love it. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be awesome. So so listening, pop to the show notes and we'll have all Janine's details there as well. If you didn't catch them, I know a lot of people are out walking and driving. Yes, Yes, exactly. So if you go back to the episode, wherever you're listening, it'll have all the show notes. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. We could have, ch- it's like we're very, very aligned. We could have chatted for so much longer. Yeah. Maybe I'm a- scared for the next conference you're at, by or at, Catherine, because <laughs> we just <laughs> But you know what? I love that. I love being with women who are aligned and it, and it's almost like this shorthand that we can, yes. you just get in and you feel like you know people. And yes. I hope- I, I get a lot of feedback from the podcast that that's how people feel from the podcast as well, that they, yeah, it's a chat. It's a beautiful, gorgeous chat. So it's thank real, you very and much. And I love that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. And thank you to our gorgeous audience. If I could ask a little, little favor when wherever you're listening or watching the episode, just subscribe, rate, provide some feedback or review because I would love for this podcast just to get into the hearts and ears of as many women who are with us, like our soul sisters. We want we want to be able to share in the journey. So wherever you're listening or watching, rate, review, comment, whatever you need to do. I would love that. So thank you. Thanks, Janine. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. You can spread the love by sharing it with a friend so she can have a little bit of what we had today. And don't forget to rate and review so we can get it into as many hearts and ears as possible. You can keep the conversation going over on my socials at The Happiness Hive. And if you'd like more high vibe happiness in your life, come and join me in our community of inspired and motivated women where you'll have everything that you need to be truly happy and bounce out of bed every day living and loving your best and most beautiful life. To find out more, pop over to the Happiness Hive website and click on the link Working With Catherine. Until next time, big hugs and happiness.